Church. It's Todd and Micah Nicholson here, and we are out in Helena, Montana, planting Buffalo Church, and we just wanna say a big thank you. Yeah, this is not a green screen behind us. This is Montana, and uh, we are so glad to be here, and it's because of your giving, because of your partnership, that Buffalo Church is, is making its presence known, and Jesus is getting all the glory uh, through what he's doing in us and through us. And so thank you for being a part of that and partnering with us. Yeah. We are so excited to spend some time with you, and uh, we're so grateful for your partnership and getting us here and getting us on site to bless this community. Thank you so much. So please welcome former Skyline Youth Pastors, Todd and Micah Nicholson. Well, we're excited that you guys are here with us. And just a couple of questions to, for, for so many new people that we have to get to know you uh, a little bit. And the first question that, of course, is going to come up is how often do you see Kevin Costner and Yellowstone all like the time. out there. All, all right. the time. Good right. friends right. with Kevin. You guys are wondering. Or as I call him, KC, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, and kind of let's start with that. Uh, we've been married for almost 18 years and been in ministry pretty much that long. Uh, we've been all over the country. Uh, and we have uh, Grace, who is 14. Um, and Isaiah, who is 11, and Lucy, who just turned seven. So that's our family. And yeah. You guys were here for several years at Skyline Church. And then tell us a little bit about that journey since really the call that God placed on your heart and then where it took you from there to where you are now. Yeah. So uh, when I was a student pastor here, I was a high school pastor um, in 2011 to 2015, and I was upstairs just above uh, those seats in the, in the Sunday school room back there when God called me, uh, vividly I remember, called me to be a senior pastor, and I was terrified. That sounded so scary because adults are creepy. <laughs> And I only knew students for 11 years. We, we served, and I thought I was a lifer, all right? I'm wearing the chucks. I'm all in, you know? And, um, and God called us to, to be a church um, a senior pastor someday. And so then out of Skyline, we felt this moving that we need to take that step of faith. And so we moved our, our family to Atlanta, Georgia, where I was a part of a church called 12 Stone Church in the greater Atlanta area. Got to serve as a campus pastor there for about four years and loved it. And then the last two years have happened, and um, our, we were currently in a mobile campus in high school, and, which shut down right away. And so then it was like, okay, God, what are you doing with us? We kind of felt displaced, and um, God began to stir in our hearts. And so we said, okay, God, wherever you're going, we want to help. So tell me about uh, Helena, choosing Helena, really God choosing that, but that being confirmed in your heart and share a little bit about the vision. I know you'll go into it a little bit in the message, but uh, share a little bit about the vision for Helena. Yeah. So we went on this city tour this past summer, about a year ago now, and uh, just felt like God was calling us to Helena specifically. We were checking out all these different uh, cities and saying, God, where are you moving that we can help? Where are you moving that we can help? And we just landed in Helena because um, being the former student pastors, we felt like uh, we could go in and, and make a difference in families' lives. And so one in every 10 students, high school students in Helena, has attempted suicide. And that was not okay with us. And we said, God, if you could use us to, to slow that ratio down and bring the hope of Jesus, we want to be about that. And so we, we planted our family there. And uh, we, we love it. We love Helena. But we have a vision bigger than Helena. Um, we, we were praying that in the first two years that God would allow us, a baby church, a church plant, to plant another church. And so we're, we're praying that God would send us a leader and continue to reproduce churches in the Northwest. Now, what is your launch date? Tell us a little bit about the buildup and then the actual date of your launch for the new church. It's going to be January 29th. Uh, we, when we moved in December, uh, we didn't know anyone. <laughs> so they call it kind of parachuting in. And so we are taking some time just to 
get to know people um, and then kind of work our, our launch team up. We're, we're throwing what we call launch parties. And so people kind of come and we give them free food, which is always good. And um, just tell them a little bit about what we're doing and hope that and pray that they come and help us build the church. And then um, in September, uh, you know, in the fall and in the uh, right before we launch, we're, we're going to try to do some more, you know, just events and things to gather people so that we can have a really good launch in January. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and one of the cool things that we're experiencing right now, we Helena has a farmer's market, so we've been giving away free coffee. Who doesn't love free coffee, right? Yeah. Am I right? And so we uh, just been loving the community, and they're like, what are you guys doing out here? You know, tell us about the church. And, and um, we just tell them we love people one at a time. That's the way Jesus has called us uh, to love this community, and we're gaining traction. And so we had at our first launch party, again, we didn't know anyone. We had over 30 people show up, um, and we already have about 10 people. We go back this week. We have another launch party, and so God has just continued to bless us. Even though we don't know people, there's a lot of momentum happening around, we talked about 60 people at the farmer's market about the church. It was fantastic, so... It's an amazing thing when you launch a church to see God show up in so many different, different ways. And, but there's always needs. There's always that, man, if we had this or we had that. What are some of your greatest needs right now about eight months out from your launch? Yeah, so, you know, just people. Um, we, we, <laughs> right? We, we want to have a church. <laughs> um, but we, we were looking for people who are saying yes to the call. Um, we, I'll share this now, is that we named it Buffalo Church because when buffalo see a storm on the prairie, they turn and face the storm and then they charge through the storm together as a herd. And that's the kind of church we want to be. We want to meet people in their storm of life and, and show them that there's a better way through the hope of Jesus. And so we're praying that God would allow that to resonate in the hearts of people and that they would join our launch team. And then a facility. We're praying that for the right facility, just like uh, Southern California, probably not as bad as here. Uh, It's hard to find a good spot to do church. And so we're praying, God, would you just open up the doors so that we can continue to see people for for Jesus. Amen. Well, you're going to hear from him right now. I want to pray over him. Would you pray with me as he shares a little bit more of the vision and the characteristic of kindness? Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for Todd and Micah, for the vision you've planted in them, and for everything that is to come moving forward. Lord, that this moment, this is a big deal. Planting a church, the enemy loves to come against that because we're taking new ground. And so we ask for your hedge of protection to go before them. We ask for great favor in the community of Helena and beyond. We're asking for that person and persons of peace, the gatekeepers of that city, to really honor them and bless them and that they would have free reign to reach people. There would be nothing hindering them. And so, Lord, protect their family. Bless them with the resources they need. Bless them with the facilities they need as so many people need to hear your good news. We love you. We praise you. And then open our hearts and our minds to hear the message he has for us today. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's go, 11 o'clock. You ready to rock? All right. It is such a blessing to be here at Skyline today. We love this church, and you guys, uh, you're legit. I don't know, actually, if you know how good you have it with this leadership team, Pastor Jeremy and the team. They are one of the best on the planet, and uh, it is an honor to partner Buffalo Church with a life-giving church, amen, like Skyline and all that God is doing here. Can we just praise God? Look, on Easter Sunday, y'all had 150 baptisms. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. God is moving and he's, he's on the move here at Skyline and we're praying for the same thing in Helena. Listen, when I was a youth pastor here, every week I would set out a chair in the front of the stage. I said, this is the Jesus chair. Now I taught teenagers, so I had to put the fear of Jesus in them the best I could. And I said, I hope that you don't hear anything that Todd Nicholson says today. My prayer is that you would hear what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you. And this is his chair, and he watching. 
okay? And so uh, that's my prayer today, that God would get the glory and uh, speak to your hearts today. So we're going to jump in, and um, I'm so excited. When I heard that you guys were doing this message series on the fruits of the Spirit and how Pastor Jeremy connected that to baseball, I'm like, of course he did, because it's Jeremy McGarity and it's baseball, and he loves uh, just, just not only does he love baseball, uh, but he played a little baseball. I think most of you know this, but if you haven't, back in 1991, I got a picture from the interwebs of uh, your pastor. Check him out. Look at that. Look, you guys got a good looking pastor. He's a good looking dude right there. Would you just pray right now? Extend your hands and pray for Buffalo because this is all they get right here. Pray for Buffalo Church, y'all. They need Jesus. Oh, matter of fact, I don't know, you know, Pastor Jeremy was such a great player, a ball player, and, and obviously by the jersey you can tell he was kind of legit, but I was kind of legit back in 91 myself. I don't know if you guys know this, I don't want to brag, but I was kind of a good ball player. Matter of fact, I think we have a picture of me in 91. I want you to check this out. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? Clearly by the jersey, Jeremy and I weren't quite on the same page. He'll catch up. It'll be fine. Um... I, I, I was a terrible ball player for the Panda Van Pirates of Greentown, Indiana. No good, no good. We went uh, O for everything. That's. But listen, uh, when, I love this idea of, of it's not about perfection, it's about progress with our daily walk with Jesus. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Because that knucklehead you just saw on the screen was all kinds of mess when he grew up and got, went to high school and college. But the, the kindness of Jesus continued to pull me in. And he has shown me so much kindness over the years. And so we're going to jump into Galatians chapter 5. If you've got your Bibles, I want to invite you to turn there. Mobile devices, go ahead and get to Galatians chapter 5. And then we're going to jump over three books to Colossians uh, chapter 3. But would you do me a favor? Would you just stand up right where you are right now? And let's, let's stand as we read the Word of God together and just let it saturate our hearts today. Thank you. Let's, let's read it together here. So Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. Oh, my bad. So I was just checking you. I was just checking Let's start at faithfulness. Ready? Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now stay standing if you will. I want you to go over to Colossians chapter 3. And so Paul just wrote this to the church of Galatians. And then he's talking to Colossians and he says something very similar. And in the first 11 verses, and I'm almost going to let you sit, so just hang tight. But the first 11 verses of Colossians chapter 3, Paul is telling them, since you claim Jesus, since you say you are a Jesus follower, you should take off the old life. You need to take it off, all the things that you used to be about yourself, and we're about to learn what we're supposed to put on. So Colossians chapter 3, verse three, uh, 12 says this, Therefore, since you've taken off that mess, sorry, that's Todd's translation, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly love, clothe yourself, did you catch it, put on, Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this church that's a life-giving church in this community of Rancho and East County. God, I thank you not only for the impact that it's had here in this county, but God, the impact that Skyline Church has had throughout this nation. And God, it's just a joy and an honor to be back amongst friends. Would you open our hearts, our minds, God, our spirit, we open our hands to you and say, yes, Jesus, we love you. Thank you for the cross. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Did you catch it? We're supposed to clothe ourselves in kindness. So which means we're going to take off the selfishness and put on the selflessness. We're supposed to take off the selfishness and put on the selflessness of Christ. And if you have been doing some reading in your scriptures, just one book before Colossians is called Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. We learn about the attitude of Christ. And that is what Paul is challenging us to clothe ourselves with humility, with kindness, with gentleness. And so maybe a better way to ask this today is, is um, are you nicer? 
Are you kinder right now than you were three years ago? And most of us would say, you know, I hope so, or some of you say, yeah, I, I feel so, that definitely feels like me. But listen, there, I'm going to be honest with you, I think there's two different types of kindness, and we're going to dive into that today. I think there's worldly kindness that just is kind, and, it's, and it lasts for a moment, and then there's a different kind of kindness we're going to talk about. But have you moved from selfishness to selflessness, and do not be elbowing your spouse, now is not the time. The only person you're going to say or change in the room today might be sitting in your seat, okay? So let's, uh, let's just keep that in mind. But, but have you been moving to selflessness? And God has been challenging me as we've been out in Helena, Montana. We knew no one, like my wife Micah said. We moved there. And God has been challenging this idea of kindness in my life. And he's been teaching me three things that I want to share with you. And then there's a few prayers we're going to, uh, I'm just going to be real vulnerable and tell you that I think God is working on in my life. So do not hear me preaching at you. I am in this with you this morning. And so the, the first principle of kindness that I want to share with you is the spirit of kindness must activate in our heart of understanding before it will ever activate in our hands, our hands into action. Which means this, there are some of you in here today that aren't sure if you are all in to this Jesus thing. And we, we would say that maybe you're spiritually unresolved. You just don't know where you are in this journey. And I just want to say, we are so glad you are here this morning. You belong here. You can belong before you believe. Do you believe that, church? We want you to know that you belong to Skyline Church. You belong here. And you don't have to believe like us yet. We were just praying that God will continue to reveal himself to you. So keep coming because we're glad you're here this morning. But we, we are praying that God will open the understanding of your heart and what Jesus did on the cross for us. Can I be honest with you, church? I got to go back every morning and remind myself of who Jesus saved. And that guy was a mess. Still can be. And once I've gotten to that place where I realize that Jesus loves me too much to leave me where he found me, amen, then it activates my heart and my hands to want to serve others and show them kindness. And so the very first thing is we, we have to let it wash over us, the understanding of God's heart, and it'll activate our hands. And so I love Colossians chapter 3. It is a great chapter. I would challenge you to read it this week because it is so good, so full of, of, of rich things. He says, hey, hey, uh, you knuckleheads, don't do these things. Those are the first 11 verses. And we don't do these, 11, or these things because of verse 12 because we're clothed now in compassion and kindness and humility. And then he says, remember, when you struggle with that, when, when you don't get it perfect because we're not perfect, we're just in progress, remember that Christ forgave you. And I love that about the rest of the chapter because he reminds us that Christ forgave us and because he forgave us, we get to forgive others and love people. What would happen to this world if right now, post the past few years, if the church led the way in kindness? Because I don't know if you've been on social media lately, but it's kind of rough. And I think people are desperate for the hope of Jesus Christ. And they may bow up against it, but what would happen if the church led the way and showed kindness? Y'all still with me? It got quiet up in here. <laughs> Listen, this next thing that, that Jesus has been teaching me is the difference between worldly kindness and Christian kindness. And here it is. I'm going to put it in an equation because my, my dad was a math teacher. It did not pass to this, this gene here. Okay, but kindness plus Jesus equals a movement. Kindness plus Jesus equals a movement. And I, I want to play a game because I love games. And uh, I'm going to describe a Bible story. And I want you to tell me who I'm talking about, which will emphasize what I'm talking about right here. And so there was a person that Jesus went and he sat down next to a well and he began to have a conversation in John chapter 4. Who am I talking about? The Samaritan woman. Right. You guys, see, you guys are good. You're sharp. Um, and then in uh, Luke chapter 19, Jesus was walking through the town and there was a man who climbed a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Who am I talking about? Zacchaeus. He was a wee little man. 
And notice in both of these stories, to emphasize my point here, neither one of them were healed by Jesus, but it made the Bible. And it was the kindness of Jesus to go to two people, a tax collector and a woman who was a Samaritan, and Jesus showed kindness to both of these people. And notice what happened. The woman at the well, she went into town and spread the gospel message. And then Luke 19, went, once he encountered Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus said, if I've wronged anyone since meeting Jesus uh, before this, I, I'm going to pay them four times what I've taken from them. See, a movement happens when Jesus gets involved. And I think the church has done a disservice to the world because we are kind people. But I buy the person's Starbucks behind me and I pay it forward. And that's cool. It, don't, don't hear me. I love getting your free drink. Thank you. <laughs> but we're doing a disservice because we're not including Jesus into the equation. As somebody say Jesus. He changes everything. He changes everything. So the second principle I want to give you is that I believe that what we live for determines how we live. And if I'm honest, it's not always easy for me to tie in Jesus because if, I, if I'm, truth be told, true confessions of a pastor, I'm not coming back for a while so I can just be honest, right? I don't always get to spend time with Jesus in the morning because I jump into my day. Shame on me. And if I'm not living for that thing, well, if I'm not living for him, he's not a thing. If I'm not living for him that day, I will miss it when the opportunity arises to show kindness. And so I think oftentimes we become so distracted that we miss that what we live for determines how we live. So God has been doing some course correction in my life over the last few months. And he's given me three prayers that I want to pray. And I'm going to share them with you. The first one is this. Lord, give me eyes to see and connect with people. Give me eyes to see and connect with people. I'm going to keep moving. The second one is this. Lord, give me ears to hear because I want to listen to what people have to say. I want to meet them where they are. We all know the Bible thumper people, right? They're standing on the street, sign, uh, street corners with the signs, and they're really aggressive, and they're telling me I need to repent. And I know they're right, but they make me feel really bad about myself. And to be honest with you, I already feel pretty bad about myself. I don't need someone else's help. I look at everybody, what they're doing on social media, and I'm like, man, my life isn't that great. Anybody with me? I'm just, I, I'm just you know what I'm doing here, right? I'm totally secure in who I am. I just want to be clear. But this world is broken and hurting. They don't need any help. But what if the church showed kindness? So God, give me eyes to see and ears to hear. And finally, this is the one. Give me the heart to point people back to Jesus. So just a couple weeks ago, I got the opportunity um, God, God brought this right before me and he put it on my lap. He, I was in a restaurant, local restaurant there in Helena and we were eating and I realized after three meetings that I was having in the same restaurant, I had the same waitress all three times. Her name's Renee. And remember, I don't know anybody, so Renee is now my highest priority. And she began to tell me how she just went through a, a rough situation in her life. And, and she just was talking. And I was asking her questions, how long you been here? And all of a sudden, it became, she just started like sharing her life. And I had an opportunity. I, I, I saw her and we connected. I heard her story. And now it's time for number three. This is the hardest one, right? Because I don't want to be weird. And I looked at Renee and I said, Renee, when was the last time somebody told you that you mattered to Jesus? Instantly, instantly her eyes welled up. So don't tell yourself the lie that people are offended by Jesus. I said, when was the last time somebody told you that you mattered to Jesus, that he sees you, he loves you? And she said, nobody's ever told me that. And I, I got to talk to her and all of a sudden tears started flowing down her face and we're just sitting there having a conversation. She looked at me. She said, what are you doing to me? I'm in the middle of my shift and you're making me cry? You know what it was? It was Jesus plus kindness equals a movement. The Holy Spirit was doing it. But it takes faithful people who are willing to maybe look a little weird. Show a little kindness. 
and add Jesus into the equation. And so God is moving on her life. I actually got to hear a buddy of mine because our church is not open yet. We open in, in January. We're a brand new church, right? We haven't even started services. And I, I have a buddy in town. He said that Renee showed up to her, his church on, on Easter Sunday. Look, God be the glory, amen? That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And it takes the faithfulness of those of us who have been clothed in the kindness of God. And so I want to share a last story with you, or last principle with you. It is uh, delayed obedience is disobedience. I do not like this one. Because if I'm honest, it's easy for me to ignore the Holy Spirit. And you, have, you don't raise your hand, but anybody ever been there? <laughs> it's easy for me to feel that nudge. I should do this for this person. And be like, nope, not today. Or they look really serious. They're like wearing a suit. <laughs> there must be a professional. I'm just a youth pastor kid. And God's like, are you going to let that stop you? Delayed obedience and disobedience. Um, I have a beautiful daughter, mostly because of her over there. She had a lot to do with that. Um, Micah and I have a beautiful daughter. She was eight when we left Skyline. She's now 14, going on 15. She plays softball. She did not get that gene from me. Uh, but this is Grace. Uh, she just finished her softball year, her um, first freshman year on the softball team. And Grace can lay down a bunt like nobody's business. Like, you know what I mean? Like she bunts on her team. And the coach will call her in to lay down bunts, a specific point, every, almost every game, she has changed the dynamic of the, the game because she can bunt, she again, did not get this from me, but she can lay down a bunt down the third baseline, first baseline, right in front of the catcher, wherever the coach wants. And I'm like, how do you do that? I couldn't even hit the ball, let alone bunt it. And um, so the coach will call her in and, and she'll lay down a sacrifice bunt. And it'll change the game. And I vividly remember being that, you can go back to my picture just so they can see the confidence that I once had as a young man. Uh, I'm still in therapy, thank you. Um, I remember vividly the coach calling a bunt and I didn't bunt. Because in my head, I'm standing there in the batter's box like, I'm a better hitter than I am a bunter. He's wrong. Here we go. Strike one. Okay, that was just a fluke. This one I got. Pitch comes in, strike two. He calls the bunt again, and he's just kind of at this point, I don't know why I'm asking Nicholson to bunt. I should have known better. I'm sure he was thinking all these things on the third baseline. And he called me to bunt, and I didn't do it. I didn't even try. Delayed obedience is disobedience. I think God is far less concerned with if we make contact, and he's far more concerned if we're willing to try. And Christians, I'm going to be honest with you. The last six months of being in a brand new town where I don't know anybody and the only way that people are going to come to the life's changing grace of Jesus Christ is if I show kindness first and I lead with that has changed me and the way that I evangelize. So I want to encourage you today. Are you willing to lay down a bunt even when you don't feel adequate? Even when you got the goofy, well, you weren't, you don't have the goofy glasses and all that. But like, are you willing to step out and trust God and the Holy Spirit? Because look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And I'm going to end with this. Right after he gives us the fruits of the Spirit verses, the very next verse in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, he says, Those of you who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. But since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. So when the coach calls a bunt, when the Holy Spirit prompts you to serve somebody and ask them, when was the last time someone told you that you mattered to Jesus? All of a sudden, it changes the conversation. Because people want to belong. But if I'm honest, the church doesn't act like they want the worldly people. So what if we led the way, Skyline? Because you're some of the best people on the planet. I really believe that. I run into Skyline people all over. And they tell me, and I can just tell, they've got the joy of Jesus. I want to be around them because they know kindness. So i got two questions for you, and I'm going to wrap up. 
Have you personally accepted the kindness of Jesus and what he did on the cross? Have you personally accepted the kindness of Jesus today? Because we need that to activate our courage and our hope. And the second one is this, the second question. Who is in your life right now that you can show intentional kindness to tomorrow at work or at school or at the coffee shop? Who do you need to lock eyes with? What barista in your life? Because the Lord knows you got a barista. Praise the Lord. But who is it that you need to look in their eyes and just, and, and it's okay to be a little weird. The Bible says we're peculiar people. We've got the joy of Jesus. We have hope that this world desperately needs and it lives inside of you. So who can you share that with? I want to invite Pastor Jeremy up and he's going to pray over us today. But I believe that this is a very relevant conversation. Even this past week, we've seen wickedness and evil attitudes and behaviors and we need the church to be the church and to show kindness and love because what Jesus did for us, he's empowered us to do for others. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's exciting. It's exciting what they're doing, and it's very difficult work. Um, You know, we mentioned as a church that we can just kind of cruise and all that if we wanted to, but God hasn't called us to that. They could have cruised. They were part of a very large church in Georgia, uh, and they could have cruised, but God called them to something very difficult. And so now they need help. And as you know, many of you, we've talked about this at Skyline Church, We have planted four churches in the last three years. Four churches in the last three years. Now, that's a huge commitment when you think about the finances that are involved in that. And every single time, we send people there. So let's go through it. Captivate Church, now in Point Loma. That was a joint plant from Seven San Diego Church, the church that we started over in Lakeside, and then Skyline Church. So a joint plant that we both sent people and finances to Captivate Church. After Captivate was one church. A couple of years ago, we sent out one church with 200 people and a lot of finances. And then after that, we planted last year Village Church over in Santee. Sent another 100 or 200 people and finances there as well. Every time we've done that. And then just recently, we planted Kansas. Now, every time we've done that, and we've gathered people up and we've said, hey, let's go. Many people have gone, and then God has brought more people to Skyline. So we never are in that business of, oh, let's hold on to, you know, people. We want to know if God's calling you to be a part of Buffalo Church. So how can you help? That's probably a question on your mind. There's a few ways that you can help. One, Todd and Micah will be in the lobby, and they'll be available to answer any questions you have. Now, many, many people are leaving California. I think we've talked about this. (laughs) And you have to ask me first, right? You do, we did make that agreement. Uh, you have to come, come meet with me. We'll see if it's really God's will for you to leave. But no, they, they, there are, right? I mean, just millions of people. Matter of fact, you guys experienced it in Helen as you're trying to find a house. Yeah. They couldn't find a house for so long because Californians are buying everything up out there. So anyway, we know there's a lot of Californians moving to Montana that need to be saved. Now, if you're thinking about leaving California, but... Here's what I've talked to. Many people have left California, and I talk to people in the lobby. It seems like every week where someone's going somewhere. Tennessee's a big one. Uh, A lot of places, yeah. And that's fine. Like I said, hey, if God's calling you to do that, great. But when people have called me back, and we've talked since they've moved over the course of this last year, many of them are kind of wondering, hey, I haven't found a church home. I I feel like this this is really hard. This is it. Okay. Here's an opportunity. We're planting a church in Helen, Montana. If you are thinking about leaving California, go to Helena. Let's go. Okay? Go to Helena. (laughs) Or even more than that, maybe you're just thinking, I want to be part of a new church. I want to be part of this mission. Go talk to him in the lobby. Maybe God's calling you to be part of this mission. Okay? Here's the thing. Maybe you go and you move permanently. You're part of this new church launch. Secondly, maybe you're part of what we call the SWAT team. S-W-A-T. Servants, willing, and temporary. Some of you have property in Montana, perhaps. I don't know. Um, If you do, you haven't told me, and shame on you, because I would like to go visit that property. But if you do, maybe you visit Montana, maybe you get an Airbnb or whatever. If, If that's a place where you go, maybe you can go and just be part of their launch. 
and, and just say, hey, we want to help for a, a limited amount of time. Okay, maybe that's part of it. But other part of it, Skyline Church has committed to supporting them financially. Maybe individually you would support them financially as well. We have it set up on our website to where you can give to Buffalo Church directly, or you can write a check to them out in the lobby, or whatever you think uh, God's calling you to do. We would love to support them in every way possible. This is so important to continue to reach people all over the world, literally. God's calling us to do that, and he raises up people like Todd and Micah who have a strong connection to Skyline. It's not just some random people. Um, This is really encouraging to us. And as you look at, is God in this? It's clear, right? We have Captivate, as I mentioned. We have One Church. We have Village Church. We have Kansas. If you put all those names together, just think how spiritual this is. Put all those names together. We are captivated by one village buffalo in Kansas. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? (laughs) Don't tell me God's not in it. It's amazing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray over them. Um, and, and then I want you to see them in the lobby and at least get their information, sign up for their email so you can at least be praying for them. Because some of you are like, look, man, I don't have any money. I ain't going to Montana. <laughs> All right. Pray for them. Be on their prayer partners list. Yeah. When we started our church years ago, I didn't let anybody walk away without at least saying, hey, would you pray for us? And I asked for money everywhere we went because you got to have money to start the church. And everybody said, yeah, we'll pray for you. And that was the difference. That's the difference maker. So at least do that. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for Todd and Micah hearing your call. And Lord, thank you for this message on kindness. And maybe you're somebody, whether you're in the building or you're watching online, and you don't know that kind of kindness. You don't understand it. And let me just be really clear. You cannot have the kind of kindness that God calls us to in Galatians 5. If you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's where it starts. You want to change a heart? You want to live with more kindness? Start with a relationship with Christ. Here's how you do that. We call it the ABCs of salvation. A, you got to admit you're a sinner. You've done some things wrong. You have not lived a perfect life. B, you believe that Jesus is the only one who saved you from your sins. And C, is you choose to follow him from this day forward. So if that's you, follow me in this prayer, in the silence of your heart, because he can hear you. Dear Jesus, today I admit I'm a sinner. I have not lived a perfect life. I've made some mistakes. But today I believe that you died for my sins. All my sins in the past, all the sins I'll commit today, and all the sins in the future, you've paid for them all. So I'm choosing to follow you today for the rest of my life, and I'm trusting for your strength and being able to do that. You said yes, welcome to the family. Others of you, it's time to recommit your life to Christ. That was a poignant question earlier that Pastor Todd mentioned. When he said, are you kinder now than you were three years ago? Maybe some of you, you would say, you know what? I'm a Christian, but man, my anger wells up quicker. My anxiousness, my anxiety wells up very fast. Then I want to encourage you to make this prayer of recommitment to the Lord right now. Follow me in this prayer in the silence of your heart because he can hear you. So dear Jesus, today I'm recommitting my life to you. I need you. I need more of you. I want to have the kindness and compassion that you have. Help me, Lord. We praise you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for all you're doing as we continue to go out and reach more people for your good name. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Put your hands together for the Lord. And don't forget, go out there. I'll see you in the lobby. Pastor Todd Michael will be out there as well. Ask questions. Get to know him a little bit more. We love you guys. We'll see you next week.